Hi, welcome back to the Power Model Drawing. Now, today we are going to uh, look at before and after model, and the lesson will be a little more challenging because everything changes. Okay, so when everything changes, your problem will get usually a little harder. Uh, but no worries, because there's always the model. All right, you you always have the Metacore model drawing, and uh, it makes everything easier. Okay, uh, but before we want to use the model, there is one thing which I would want to introduce to you, which is the use of the before and after tabulation. Now, uh, actually, whenever there are before and after questions, there is a better way to solve, which is to use the BCA tabulation. So it makes it uh, quite easy. Uh, all right, so how do we actually use the before and after tabulation? So let's look at example one. Alright, example one, and let's highlight. Now, Joe collect, collects humans and Robert figurines. The number of human figurines is 40% of the rob robot's figurines. Alright, now, in our percentage lesson, when there's a percentage, we can actually change the percentage into fractions, and then it becomes easier to draw the model, or it also becomes easier to put the numbers into the table if you are using the BCA tabulation. Alright, so why is 40%? Now, 40%, if you change it into fraction, is 40 over 100, 2 fifths, right, simplest form. So which means that you replace the 40% with 2 fifths, and then you can use this fraction to draw your model, or to put into your boxes later, right, your before and after table. Okay, now how do you, how do you draw the model, or how do you break up the fraction? Now, you arrow point. So the numerator belongs to the human figurines, and the denominator belongs to the robot figurines. So which means that the human figurines has 2, and the robot has 5. So that's how you change the percentage into fractions for easy drawing, or to put into your BCA table. Okay, now let's continue. After buying another 31 human figurines, and 70 robot figurines, the ratio of human figurines to robot figurines become 3 to 7. So this is the after ratio. So how many robot figurines does he have in the end? So what is unchanged in this problem? Everything has changed. All right. So uh, if everything changed, then of course uh, it is not as simple as what is unchanged, or when something is unchanged. right? Uh, but we can still solve the problem. So let's draw the table. All right. I'm going to draw the model the later part, right, in the later part of the solving. Uh, but for the first part, I will draw a table. So every time when something or everything changes, right, in the before and after problem, when everything changes, I will like to use a table, right, so that we don't have to draw complicated models, all right? Okay, now, so you have BCA, and then you label human, robots, and uh, total. All right, so you put the numbers inside, like model drawing, right, sentence by sentence. The first sentence, there's nothing to put in. Let's go on. The human figurines is two, two units. And the robot is five units. So total at first is seven, seven units. So after buying another 31 human figurines, so you plus 31, and then another 70 robot figurines, so you plus 70. Now the ratio of human figurines to robot figurines become three, is to 7. Now, once you have used the units, or once you have caught units already, then over here you have the call parts. So you have parts and units. So this is 10 parts all together in the end. Right? How many robot figurines does he have in the end? So that's your question mark. And your table is done. <laughs> okay? So it's actually quite easy to fill in the boxes. Alright, now, then how do we draw the model? Well, if everything changes, we don't make anything equal. Right? There's nothing to make equal. So, if you notice carefully, now, uh, if you look at the after, you have three parts and seven parts, uh, I would like to make them equal, right? So that when we draw the model later, it's easier. How to make them equal? All right, like this. Now, I can times seven, and then I can times three. All right, times seven, times three. And then the whole column here will also times seven, and then this column here will times three, okay? Uh, but that's not, that's not their correct values, right? But why do I times seven times three? Uh, so that I can draw out the model, which is easier to draw. Okay, so two unit times seven, you will have 14 units. Okay, let me just write down, right, 14 units, 
Okay, 14 units. And then 31 times 7 will be... 31 times 7, you will get 217. Right? So plus 217 is equal to 3 parts times 7. That will be 21 parts. Alright, so which means that I'm going downwards to get the statement. So 2 units times 7, 14 units. 31 times 7 is 217. And that is equal to 3 parts times 7, which is 21 parts. Alright, how about the next column? Doing the same thing. Now, 5 units times 3 will be 15 units. 70 times 3 will be 210. And again, 7 part times 3 will be also 21 parts. Okay, so how do we draw the model with these two statements? Alright, can you see that you have 21 parts and 31 parts? They are equal. So I'm going to draw a model which is like this. 14 units plus 217 equal the whole rectangle, which is 31 parts. And then I draw another similar rectangle, same as above, and this time I cut 15 units and 210, also equal, also the 21 parts. Okay, so you can see that both the rectangles are equal. Okay, that's how you look at the statements and draw out the model. And and then as and when you draw the model, what's the next step? You look for the difference. So can you find the difference? The difference in the units is 1 unit, right? 15 minus 14, you get 1 unit. And then how about the whole numbers? You take two one, uh, 217 minus 210, so your difference is 7. So now you can see that your 1 unit is equal to 7. And you can solve already. So how many uh, robot figurines does he have in the end? Well, be very careful, it's not 5 unit times 3. Alright, it's not, uh, look at, let's look at here. It's not 5 unit times 3. Now, you have to look at the original. Look at the actual. Alright, so how many robots did he have at first, which is 5 units. Okay, 5 units, and that is 7 times 5, 35. So he has 35 robot figurines at first. Then you plus 70, and now he has 105 in the end. Alright? So let's write down the steps. So 35 plus 70, he has 105 robot figurines in the end. <coughs> why not 21? Why not, uh, why not 5 units times 3, which is 15 units? Uh, because when you times 3 times 3 times 3, uh, that is not the true values. That's not the correct values. It is just to make the make equal, right? Just to make the parts equal. So that when you draw the model, you have two equal rectangles, all right? So the true values are the numbers in black. All right? So this is how you draw the model all right? To and use the model to solve. OK, now let's go to the next one. All right, question number two. OK, another example. And let's read. Now, a, co a carton contains apples and pears in the ratio 9 is to 13. The shopkeeper threw away 17 apples and 23 pears that were rotten. As a result, the ratio of the apples to the pairs became 5 to 8. So this is the after. How many pairs did he have in the end? So what is unchanged? Again, everything has changed. right? The apple get lesser, the pairs also get lesser. Did he throw away equal number of apples and pairs? No. So the difference has also changed. So when everything changes, I would like to use the table method, right? the BCA. So BCA, and then you have your apples, pairs, and then you have total. Okay, so when something is unchanged, uh, well, it's easy to draw the model. Uh, but when everything changes, I switch the method and I use the table method. And then after that, I draw the model. <laughs> okay, all right. So you have 9, 13, 9 is 13, total is 22 units. All right, so that is your before ratio. The shopkeeper threw away 17 apples and 23 pairs. And then as a result, the apple to pass became 5 is to 8. Now you cannot call units, you have to call them parts. Alright, parts. So the total in the end is 13 parts. Okay, how many pairs did he have in the end? Which is the question mark. And you are done. Okay, you're done with the, with the table. Alright, so what do we do now? Now, same thing. Can I make the after, look at the after. Can I make the after, uh, the apples and the pairs in the after, can I make them equal? Yes, I can. Times 8 times 5. Alright, make them equal. 
uh, but of course the true values right the correct values is not uh, is not uh, five part times eight become 40 parts right it's not that's not the true value uh, you but why times eight times five is to make equal so that you can have two equal rectangles when you draw later all right so when you times eight in this column everything also times eight and when you times five then in this column everything also times five okay so what is your statement now so you can go down right you go down this way to create your statements so nine unit times eight is 72 units and then you minus 17 times 8, which is 136. So you minus 136, and that will be equal to 40 parts. All right, next one. Now look at the pairs. You have 13 unit times 5, which is 65 units. And you minus 23 times 5, 115. And that also equal 40 parts. All right, so how do we draw the model? So let's draw the model. Okay, now when you see a minus there, then your rectangle will have to be longer. So you have 72 units minus 136. And that's how you get the 40 parts, which is the empty, right? The empty uh, rectangle on the left side. That is your 40 parts. Okay, and then you have 65 units minus again. So again, you have a, a longer but slightly shorter than above. Alright, so you have Okay, you have a rectangle, and that is 65 units. And where do you cut 115? You cut 115 over here. See? 115. And why? Why do you cut over there? So that you can have 40 parts as well, which is same as above. Now you look at the two empty boxes, they are the same. Alright? So that is what you are trying to do when you want to make the parts equal. You want to draw out the model, right? And it looks like this. So one more time, let's have a quick recap. So you have 72 units minus 136, you get 40 parts, which is the green box. And then you have 65 units, which is a bit shorter, and you cut away 115, you get also 40 parts, the green box. And then now you can break up, right? Uh, no, I mean, now you can look at the model and you can find the difference. So how many units difference? 72 unit minus 65 units, you get 7 units. 136 minus, all right, 136 minus 115, you get 21. So which means that your 7 unit is 21, your 1 unit is 3. Okay, all right. Then you can come back to the model, and can you find how many, or come back to the table, uh, can you find how many pairs in the end? Yes, I can. Now, be careful that you do not take 13 unit times 5 because that's not true value, right? That's not the correct value. It's 13 units only. So 13 units will be, right, there are 13 units of pairs at first. So 13 times 3, that is 39. Okay, 39. And then you minus 23. Okay, not 23 times 5, right? It's minus 23. And you will get how many pairs left. So 39 minus 23. And what do you get? So you will get 16. Right, 16. So how many pairs did he have in the end? Answer, 16. And you solve the problem, right? Easily. Got it? <laughs> right, so it's actually quite easy. Uh, once you understand the table, and then plus the model, everything is, uh, you, you will, they will help you to get the answer ready. All right, let's go on to the practice problem. And I'm going to give you about 10 minutes to try to work out, draw the table, and then uh, draw the model, and then use both to solve the problem. <laughs> All right, so your time starts now. Okay, so have you worked out the answer? Now the ratio of children in room A to children in room B is 5 to 7. When 30 children left room B and another 30 children joined room A, the ratio of the children in room A to the children in room B becomes 5 to 1. So how many children are there in room B at first? Okay, now uh, in this question, the difference is actually unchanged because you have 30 children I mean, the total is unchanged, right? Total is unchanged, why? 30 children left room B, and then another 30 children joined room A. So the total is unchanged. Uh, but to make it very simple, all right? Everything changes, all right? So that, uh, so that you can see how the model looks like. Okay, so everything changes. Why everything changes? Because when 30 children left room B, you have lesser children in room B. When 30 children join room A, you have more in room A. And but the total is still the same, right? The total. Okay, so let's draw the table. Okay, let's draw the table and 
fill in the boxes. So you have BCA, and then you have room A, room B, and then total. Okay, now uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make I'm going to everything changes. I'm, I'm going to, we're going to use everything changes right in this problem solving, so that we can draw out the model. Uh, but of course, uh, if the total is unchanged, then uh, it's actually very simple to to solve. Uh, but for the sake of uh, of showing you what we have done in the last two problem, so we will take it as everything changes, right? Because usually most of the students they wouldn't know that everything changes, right? Thirty children left, another thirty children join. Uh, they wouldn't know that that the total is unchanged, so they will think that everything has changed, which is also quite true right true to us quite true right nothing right nothing uh, nothing wrong with their with that right everything changes uh, but if they think a little bit more actually the total is unchanged but you can still solve the problem so let's let's draw the table and let's fill in the numbers so room a five seven total 12 12 units so when 30 children left room B so you minus 30 and then 30 children join room a you plus 30. Now room A to room B become five parts, one part, and total six parts. So you have to call them differently, right? Parts and units. So how many children are there in room B at first? And that is your question mark. Okay, so what do we do? Well, if everything changes, what do we do? We make the look at the after and can we make the parts equal? Yes we can. All we have to do is just times five to make equal. Five parts, five parts. And then over here you times five. And then over here, you also times 5. But take note that these are not the true values. For example, uh, the boys at first is not, I mean the, 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 the children in room B at first is not 35 units, but is 7 units. All right. And uh, how many children left? It's not 150 children left room B, but it's only 30. And how many children remain in room B? It's only one part. Okay, it's not five parts. Okay, but we times five so that we can make the model equal later. We can draw equal rectangles. Okay, so let's create the statements. Let's uh, write out the statement. So room A, you have five unit plus 30 equal five parts. And then room B, you have 35 unit minus 150. That will also give you five parts. Okay, so how do we draw the model? Now, you have 5 unit plus 30, so you draw a rectangle, cut 5 unit plus 30 equal 5 parts, which is the whole rectangle, and there is a 35 unit minus. So when there's a minus, you just draw a little longer, All right, and this is 35 unit, and where do you minus 150? Over here. All right, you cut 150, and that also gives you your 5 parts, which is the empty box. Okay, so let's recap. Okay, let's recap so that you understand how to draw the model. So 5 unit plus 30, one part, which is the red box. 35 unit minus 150, you also get 5 parts, which is the red box. And then you can cut the red box into 5 units and 30. And now you can find how many units is this, which is 35 unit minus 5 unit, 30 units. All right, and your 30 units is equal to 30 plus 150 and that is 180 so your one unit will be 180 divided by 36 okay and then we come back to the table can we find how many children in room B at first which is 7 units so 7 times 6 42 and that's it right using both table and model to solve the problem okay got it Alright, so I hope that after this lesson, you have uh, now you understand how to do questions which are uh, before and after, uh, and everything changes. Uh, so, well, your teacher may draw a model throughout the whole problem, throughout the whole solving, you will see purely model, which is good, nothing, nothing wrong. Uh, but I think that you can use a table to get with the model and get the answer faster. But of course, there are other ways to solve, other, uh, other types of 
methods or other other ways that your that you may see teachers using so it is your choice to choose which way is better so you don't have to uh, don't have to be forced to use any way that that I tell you so you have to decide which is better and which way works which method works for you and then you just continue to use that method okay all right so we come to the end of this lesson and uh, stay tuned for the up and coming lessons on model drawing so I will see you in the next lesson